do! Go! But I kill you, everyone will think I'm the real Homer! <laughs> None of this seems odd to you. Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today we shall be doing a very ambitious collection overview. Similar to how I've done videos in the past, looking at the entirety of Futurama released on DVD, South Park as another example, this time we're going to delve into one of the all-time greats of animated television, and that of course is The Simpsons, which I absolutely adore this show. Regardless of the current state of the series, you can't argue with just how wonderful and magical the classic Simpsons formula really was. And so in this video we have all 20 seasons and the movie to look through, and I'm going to be delving into each individual season, talking about a couple of episodes that I like and dislike from each individual run, and of course picking a personal favourite episode from each season. And so without any further delay, let us delve into Season 1 and we'll work our way through these box sets in chronological order. Starting off with Season 1, there are so many wonderful, like, character-driven and introductory episodes. Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire being the first ever episode of the show, a very humble, festive story. But The Genius is one of my favourites, which contains some really quirky animations. And I guess that goes for a lot of these earlier episodes, but in particular, seeing Homer rage at Bart for telling lies about his IQ, that has always stuck with me. And speaking of those characters, there are lots of Homer and Bart standouts, but really most of the characters do gain a spotlight throughout. Life on the Fast Lane in particular, that was almost going to be my favourite choice for this season, but I'm going to have to go with Krusty Gets Busted. Introducing one of the best guest characters from the entire series, that of course being Sideshow Bob, of which he was featured as a background character at first, but this episode is where he really began to shine, and I love the idea of crafting an existing background character that we have seen before into a lovable villain, and in every appearance, Kelsey Graham, who voices the character, delivers a superb voiceover performance, some great plot details in this, especially seeing Krusty accused of robbing the Quickie Mart when really it was Sideshow Bob impersonating his colleague in order to gain fame and fortune, and making a lifelong enemy, Bart Simpson is the one to foil Bob's plans once and for all, and as we know it, this isn't the last we see of those two characters conflicting with one another. And here's a look at the DVD box for Season 1. This one is fairly unique. It's a free disc set when the majority of these box sets become four discs. And in the earlier seasons, we had some really great visual gags on here, such as the TV there displayed, and you could remove the inner packaging to reveal more imagery on the behind section. And here is a look at the actual box set there itself. You could always swap over the image on the inside of the TV as well if you did choose to do so. And then opening this up, we always had like a little letter printed from Matt Groening, which became a common thing printed on the box sets up until season six, when they then changed it to adding these on the inside of the episode guides. And so here are the discs there with disc one, disc two, and disc three. And then hidden behind here, we have the episode guide, of course. Moving on now to season two, for a long time, this was my personal favorite collection of episodes. Lots of groundbreaking moments with the beginning of the annual Trias of Horror specials. It's revealed Homer has a half-brother called Herb, and a huge portion of this season is devoted to episodes surrounding Bart Simpson, where at the time he was becoming a fan-favorite character, and I can see why. The mischief and the iconic catchphrases are enough to capture people's imaginations, and with episodes like Free Men and the Comic Book, which is a favorite of mine, Along with Bart the Daredevil, Bart gets hit by a car, Bart vs. Thanksgiving, you get the idea. Bart, 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 Bart. My favourite episode from this season, however, is one I've actually made an individual video covering to the fullest detail. In my video series Animation Preservation, this was an episode I knew was worth delving into, and that is Simpson and Delilah, which is a very raw and overall wholesome story about personal identity, where Homer tries to find value in himself at work, where he illegally acquires synthetic hair which improves his lifestyle overall. And when hiring an assistant, Carl, played by Harvey Firstine, he sees through Homer's charade and Homer instead learns about his own capabilities and that ultimately those around him are extremely shallow. 
When bold, they don't see his potential, but with hair, they listen to his every word. And it's a bittersweet end to this story, but a great episode nonetheless for growing his character. And for more on that episode, please do feel free to check out the video on that on the channel. As always, it is very much appreciated. And here's a quick look at the actual DVD box set, which is very similar to the likes of what we had with Season 1, only this time this is a 4-disc rather than a 3-disc set. We have the note from Matt Groening there on the inside, and here's a look at the artwork on the inside there with all four DVD discs. You'll probably hear this phrase more than once throughout this video, but yet again, this is another personal favourite season of mine. And I love the variety of stories in Season 3. Mr. Lisa Goes to Washington is an excellent piece looking at self-discovery and how corrupt the so-called real world really is from the point of view of Lisa Simpson. When Flanders failed, it always cracks me up where Homer finally gets what he wants to see his neighbour fail, only to realise that this feeling isn't as sweet as he once thought. Saturdays of Thunder was a childhood favourite, especially having played The Simpsons Hit and Run religiously, and getting to actually drive the vehicle featured in the episode The Honorola was always fun. Flaming Moe's made for a twisted story on friendship between Homer and Moe, and looking at the season objectively, interestingly, as of the last few years, this has become slightly controversial thanks to one specific episode, and that's why I'm going to choose that as my favourite. Stark Raving Dad is an episode I've aired my thoughts on previously on the channel, and it's saddening that the episode has essentially just been book burnt. I guess just in case it offends people that Michael Jackson was associated with said episode. My question to that would be, how long until more content is removed from the vast Simpsons library with so many guest spots? Surely somebody is going to trip up where their career becomes questionably tarnished, to a similar extent, and whether or not something similar will ever happen again, who knows, but otherwise this episode is one that I do often rewatch. Homer is sectioned for wearing a pink shirt to work, having looked different and standing out from a crowd, and ends up in an asylum where his cellmate assumes the identity of Michael Jackson. Is he actually MJ? That seemed to be one of the big questions of the episode along with utilising Michael Jackson to help Bart write a birthday song for Lisa. I found that to be a very wholehearted episode, which sadly, as far as historical allegations have gone, unfortunately, the tarnished career to an extent of Michael Jackson has kind of removed the innocence behind this episode, but again, that seems to be objective opinion and vocal fan reaction when looking back on this episode, but separating the art from the artist to an extent, I do very much love this episode, and it's for sure one that I feel should be restored. One of the more creative box set designs this time around, we have the Simpsons family tipping backwards, and then seemingly they have gone through the back of the box set through the wall, which I thought was a neat touch. And then here is the box set itself, as always, some really fun artwork included on these. There's the note from Matt Groening, and then the designs for the discs there that are included. Season 4 was the first ever Simpsons box set I ever got, and I used to watch this box set over and over when I was a lot younger, to the point where I even had to replace one of the discs. And with the overall quality of the show at this point becoming consistently brilliant with basically every episode showing off the winning Simpsons formula, a favourite is very difficult to choose. A few honourable mentions, the season opener Camp Krusty is just perfect, with Bart taking control of a very nightmarish outdoor retreat. Homer the Heretic has some incredible themes where Homer questions faith and what it means to attend church. Mr. Plough speaks for itself, testing Homer's friendship with Barney Gumble, and there is so much emotion poured into the writing with a lot of these stories, especially Homer's triple bypass and Lisa's first word, but my personal favourite, it's got to be Marge versus the monorail. Springfield gets conned into building a very unsafe monorail system with Homer becoming the conductor, and Marge helping to save the day. It's a very quotable episode, and I do love the one-off character of Lyle Langley, voiced phenomenally by Phil Hartman. Truly one of the best voice actors for the early seasons of the show. And here is a look at the box set itself. I love the artwork on this one, and the blue coloration is definitely one of my favourite looks for these box sets in particular. 
And so removing the outer sleeve, we have there the artwork on the inside. The usual note there from Matt Groening and the artwork inside is definitely some of the most collective of so many characters shown off. And as you can see there, we have all four discs presented, which have some really fun alternative pieces of artwork on the inside as well. Season 5 now, which is where the TV-style box sets end in favour of the character-themed box sets going forward. And once again, the struggle for picking favourites is very real. This season is notable for the 100th episode of the show, where Bart accidentally gets Principal Skinner fired from Springfield Elementary. Deep Space Homer is an incredible episode, arguably, again, one of the more quotable, especially for the golden era of the show. Lisa vs. Malibu Stacy is one that I do find to be underappreciated. Bart Gets Famous is iconic enough for the save a line dialogue. But as far as favourites go, I'm going to cheat and actually choose two episodes. Cape Fear is easily the best episode for me, where Kelsey Grammer reprises his role and continues the performance of Sideshow Bob looking to exact revenge on Bart Simpson for once again foiling his criminal plans, cementing him as a mortal enemy, but I've already chosen the Sideshow Bob-themed episode as a favourite, so for good measure, I'm going to go with Homer Goes to College. And I had the episode on VHS years and years and years ago, and it is one that I would often revisit, and especially when seeing Homer sort of out of his element where the power plant is inspected, it's revealed Homer never went to college, and so he is forced to actually go back and actually get a diploma in order to continue his role as the safety inspector. And just watching him experience life on campus makes for some really well-timed comedy, and some interesting throwaway characters are included as well, such as the Nerds, a generic group of computer geeks which were used sparingly across the show, but were still memorable nonetheless. Moving on now to Season 6, this is where the character-themed box sets began, making a significant change from what we were used to with the first five seasons, and these were now specific to a certain member of the family going up to Season 10. So this one is the Homer style, which also released as a limited edition clamshell style box, which, to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of. They seem to be very prone to breaking very easily. Whenever I would see those in second-hand stores, they were always just cracked or damaged to some degree, no matter what. So definitely a weaker choice as far as a box set style, so I opted to go for the sort of standard releases as they were then known. And overall, this box set, and this season in particular, definitely a more sort of darker tone and overall very notable for arguably being slightly darker with certain episodes, such as Bart of Darkness, no pun intended, Lisa's Rival, and Round Springfield. And despite how much Matt Groening himself hates it, A Star is Burns is one of my favourites, which was basically a massive commercial for Al Jean's short-lived TV series known as The Critic. It stinks! Yes, Mr. Sherman, everything stinks. If you like the Simpsons style of comedy, The Critic is a show I would definitely recommend. But looking on this season, obviously the most recognisable episode is Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1, and that of course is the episode I'm choosing as a favourite. And with that being the first ever cliffhanger episode of the show, I applaud the writing for setting up the perfect mystery and reflecting back on the episode. And even knowing who shot Mr. Burns, you can still appreciate the red herrings pointing at other characters, with the motive of killing him, Homer in particular, had the most hilarious and absurd motive, going crazy over the fact that Burns just doesn't remember his name. And I'd also recommend checking out the bonus content on this DVD set surrounding that episode, of which I love the inclusion of Springfield's Most Wanted, which was a real TV event that aired prior to Part 2 in Season 7, which was kind of a spoof of America's Most Wanted, and basically it was kind of a deep dive into the shooting and sort of overanalyzing the characters, and I found it to be quite fun, and I'm sure there are those out there that would appreciate that as well. And here is a look at the actual box set. I love the artwork on this one, obviously all surrounding the uh, Who Shot Mr. Burns episode. And so removing the outer box, we have the Homer on the inside. There's Maggie. And then opening this one up, rather than having it unfold completely with a panel per disc, we instead have the discs all kept on the center on the inside, and they just literally fold over like so. 
Looking at Season 7 now, the overall layout does remain more or less the same as what we had with Season 6, with the next few box sets remaining fairly consistent in terms of the look of the content that you're getting. The one difference, however, is this really bizarre inclusion of a Top Trumps card with this season, which you could add to your Volume 1 collection if you obviously collected these kinds of cards. Really strange, that kind of inclusion was never repeated in any of the other Simpsons box sets, so I think that's a really unique and overall fun inclusion for Season 7. And there's a look at the artwork on each individual disc, therefore the actual box set. And then in terms of the content that you're getting with this set, Overall, it's a really interesting season where, of course, we have the follow-up to Who Shot Mr. Burns. Turns out it was Maggie. Very fun mystery plot, which had overall a very satisfying ending. And beyond that, there are loads of iconic episodes, such as Lisa the Vegetarian, King Size Homer, where Homer gains weight to work from home under a disability order. Sideshow Bob's War on Television is a very fun storyline. But the episode I've gained a huge appreciation for in recent years is Mother Simpson. Learning more about Homer's past is one thing, but learning about his mother, Mona, and the ongoing feud between her and Mr. Burns as a plot thread, I really liked. And I like the ideas behind that being spread over several episodes unexpectedly, where this story is overall really engaging. And then there's the opposite side of things. The ending, and it's easily one of the most crucifying moments in the show, where Homer has to say goodbye to his mother once again, not even knowing if he will ever see her again. Overall, easily one of the most rewatchable and heartfelt episodes from the series, and for sure a favourite of mine. Introducing a few of my favourite side characters and one-off characters from Season 8. Homer's enemy instantly springs to mind with the hilarious workplace conflict between Homer and Frank Grimes. Brother from another series introduces Cecil, Sideshow Bob's brother, who is just as maniacally twisted and oddly gives kind of a human quality to Bob who takes pity on the Simpsons' children when they are in danger. And speaking of danger, we are given arguably one of the greatest villainous characters of the entire show in You Only Move Twice, with Albert Brooks playing the role of Hank Scorpio. Homer is enthralled about a new job opportunity with Globex Corporation, where the entire family move away from Springfield to Cypress Creek, and where Homer is succeeding at his job where he is actually respected by his boss, the rest of the family aren't really faring too well in their new surroundings, which leaves a very conflicted Homer wondering whether or not he should focus on his happiness and essentially making Hank Scorpio happy with him, or should he do what's best for his family. Overall, a very well-written, very humorous episode, and one that has definitely stood the test of time, in my opinion. Many refer to Season 9 as the end of the golden era, as kind of a general consensus, something I do disagree with personally, although there may be a decline with certain episodes going forward, but I feel a lot of shows have many episodes that are hit or miss, in later seasons of the show, and I feel the overall quality is still viable going forward from this point. However, that doesn't mean mistakes weren't made. One episode in particular that many have deconstructed is The Principal and the Pauper. Many have argued how this was a huge middle finger to the fans by completely erasing a beloved and well-established character with an estranged backstory of deceit. Turns out that Principal Skinner is an imposter, Real name being Armin Tamzarian, who stole the identity of Seymour Skinner. After this big revelation, the town rejects the real Skinner in favour of the imposter, for sure a very clunky moment in the show's history, of which many even ignore that episode and just consider it defunct by default, which is kind of interesting. In terms of positives for the season, the Trias of Horror 8 always stood out to me personally for the Fly vs. Fly segment, inspired very much so by the original Fly movie and obviously the David Cronenberg film as well. Also features the very notable 200th episode where Homer becomes in charge of the town's waste disposal after criticising the garbage man, which was always one of my favourite throwaway lines. You trash-eating stink bags! <laughs> Uh -oh. And using Homer's rage as a bit of a segue, my absolute favourite episode from this season is the opening episode, The City of New York vs. Homer Simpson, a very quotable, very funny, Homer-specific episode where Barney is made to be the designated driver between Homer and the other guys, and he takes Homer's car and rather than returning it, ends up illegally parking it at the World Trade Center. 
Supposedly, Barney had a night of his own off-screen, and seeing Homer's frustrations and by the end pure hatred for the city of New York, this episode will never not be funny to me. Season 10 now. Overall, this collection is very Homer-heavy with a lot of stories, specifically focusing on his unique life choices, such as profiteering from stealing grease, becoming an inventor, a Hollywood insider, a hippie, adopting a pet lobster. You, you kind of get the idea. But there's so much more to this. Some episodes are very heartfelt, such as Kidney Trouble, giving further insight into Homer's relationship with his father, Looking at Homer's marriage, one of the funniest episodes for me personally is Viva Ned Flanders. Despite the two characters being binary opposites, they oddly have some of the funniest shared stories, where Homer and Ned accidentally marry at cocktail waitresses in Vegas, which leads Homer and Ned questioning their moral decisions. And keeping the Homer focus going, I'm going to pick Homer to the max as my favourite from this season. There are plenty of episodes that show his attempts at trying to kind of reinvent himself, and changing his name to Max Power gives him a huge boost in confidence, almost like he's playing a character, and ironically, he's basically trying to hide his real name thanks to sharing it with a dim-witted TV show character within the series, and it's interesting to see just how much this bothers him, showing a very childlike innocence to his portrayal deep down. Season 11 now, this one is kind of a mixed season for me personally, some good episodes, some very moving pieces of character development, such as the passing of Maud Flanders and how that obviously affects Ned, and then there are some genuinely really silly episodes that I had honestly completely forgot about, Faith Off being one of them, where Homer ends up with a bucket super glued to his head, only for Bart to be fooled into believing he is a miracle worker by removing the seemingly impossible bucket. The finale episode, Behind the Laughter, is genuinely a fascinating piece. It's enriched by meta-humour, a form that sadly seems to have gained more negative connotations nowadays, but a lot of fans would argue in favour of this being a show finale, and it's a very fun deconstruction of The Simpsons family without taking itself too seriously. As for favourites, I genuinely struggled to pick something. I'd honestly say that there aren't many episodes here that stand out above the others. I like the Tamako episode, Apu, and Manula having octuplets is kind of interesting. The Funzo Christmas episode is very creepy, but a fun festive idea. But I'm going to play it safe for my favourite choice and go with Trias of Horror 10. With enough variety and, as ever, some incredibly imaginative ideas... This was a Halloween special I often rewatched growing up. Werewolf Flanders is hilarious, Bart and Lisa having superpowers made for some brilliant visual gags, and my favourite out of the three stories was the last segment, Life's a Glitch, Then You Die. A lot of shows around this point in time were using the Y2K problem idea for the benefits of storytelling, where it was thought that computers would struggle to format calendar-related data going from the year 1999 to the year 2000, and when New Year is welcomed, so is the end of the world, thanks to Homer, who failed to debug the power plant's computers. Overall, a very fun, imaginative, and very dark story at the same time. I should also mention as well the change of packaging, where the Simpsons box sets got slightly thinner, and that's because they removed all the plastic casing in relation to the actual DVD discs being held on plastic trays, this time around, which I never really agreed with, but I've never really had an issue with either, is the fact that the discs are now stored in cardboard sleeves, which leaves them more susceptible to being damaged, unfortunately, which is not a great sign. But regardless, I still applaud the artwork and the overall designs that have gone into these box sets. Overall, some really incredible illustrations that always take me aback. Season 12 felt more memorable compared to the last season with more notable highlights for certain characters and developed overall some really interesting ideas that evolve beyond what has already been established, such as Christy the Clown learning that he is a parent, which completely goes against his selfish celebrity ego. Despite their history together, Homer and Mr. Burns oddly come to a mutual agreement where Homer will now embarrass himself publicly for money, Lisa discovers the key to bullying as part of a strange science experiment. Some really great writing throughout, particularly the episode A Tale of Two Springfields, which I absolutely love, where the town is split in half thanks to Homer revolting against the idea of area codes, 
And this episode guest stars the band The Who, which is honestly one of my favourite guest appearances on the show. And speaking of one-off characters, I loved the episode where Marge mentors a convict who aspires to be an artist, which was a great deconstruction of Marge and how she always tries to see the good in other people. My personal favourite episode from this run, however, is Homar, or H-O-M-R, where it's revealed Homer has a crayon lodged in his brain, which explains his lack of intelligence, and seeing a smarter side to his character was overall very enriching, but I love how this allowed him to bond more closely with Lisa, which could have been overall a very interesting dynamic to kind of continue onwards throughout the show, but as ever, the downside with this sort of thing is the typical reset trope, where Homer has the crayon put back in his head where he once again becomes the man we all know and love. Next up is season 13, and similar to season 12, I felt a lot of these episodes were really interesting because they evolved, or at least tried to evolve certain characters, and as the show went on, this is something I personally feel should have been a focus, with just the longevity of The Simpsons taken into account. Otherwise, things then become stale and zombified. Oh wait. (laughs) Anyway, Some standouts for this season. Expanding on Lisa's character, this is where she began to question her faith, rejecting the church and instead becoming a Buddhist. Apu cheats on Manjula, making for a very awkward episode. Homer and Mo have yet another conflict with one another that affects their friendship. I thought you said you had to go. And speaking of Homer, he does have some very strange and captivating episodes for this run. The Blunder Years sees him struggle with a suppressed psychological trauma, but I really like the episode Jaws Wired Shut. Seeing Homer struggle with communication only to find a way around this and embrace the joys of listening to others, I felt that was a very unique sentiment where Homer maybe does learn a lesson for once. As much as I adore the Trias of Horror-inspired cover art for season 14, this season is fairly average, with a few above-average episodes that again do try and experiment with the show's content. You can see how certain ideas have a huge advantage to the overall series, where perhaps changing something minor could have led to further storytelling opportunities. One of the highlights for me personally is Bart vs. Lisa vs. the third grade, where Lisa moves up a grade and Bart is dropped from the fourth grade. The irony being, they both hate this change. It's a great episode about sibling conflict where changing something so minor really could have continued for several episodes to expand on those ideas, but like always, the reset trope kicks in, everything returns to form. Other standouts include Large Marge, genuinely one of the most hilarious Marge-themed episodes for all the wrong reasons. The Great Louse Detective features the return of Sideshow Bob with one of my favourite visual gag reveals for his character. Hello, Bob. <laughs> I like the idea of calling back to Frank Grimes, even though this plot twist felt very forced in retrospect. You're my mechanic, Junior! Frank Grimes, Junior! My personal favourite for this run, however, has got to be the finale, Mo Baby Blues. Mo is one of my favourite characters on the show, voiced by the delightful Hank Azaria, and seeing a softer side to his supposed ugly character is just hilarious, where he bonds with Maggie, only for this to become an estranged obsession. Season 15 now, this is the only Simpsons boxer I ever got the limited edition sleeve style of. And honestly, this was just by pure chance. I believe I ordered this online and it just happened to be the limited edition version. And it was kept in very good condition. The gimmick with these is that I always used to think that these were actually stuck to the front of the box sets, whereas they are thankfully removable. And so season 11 onwards had these really strange sort of 3D style shapes for certain characters, which sadly didn't match the main Simpsons 5, but otherwise... Interesting way to put things together with a unique sleeve included to hold the packaging together there as well. Although it's by no means a perfect season, there's some really enjoyable episodes featured throughout. Trias of Horror 14 has one of the best what-if style stories, where Bart and Milhouse accidentally break a time-manipulating stopwatch. And so freezing the world, it takes them years to fix the watch, where they both age accordingly, and I love seeing that kind of existentialism, where it shows the continued creative freedom of the Trias of Horror stories. 
And speaking of creativity, the episode at Catch Em If You Can always resonated with me for its homage to the original Spielberg movie Catch Me If You Can. Homer's mother makes yet another return, only to be cruelly removed from his life once again. The Simpsons visit the UK, what could possibly go wrong there? Choosing a favourite, I'm going to pick a festive episode this time, that being Tis the 15th Season. Homer's selfish nature comes back to bite him where the family turns against him for buying a really expensive gift for himself. And so, in an attempt to learn a lesson, he vows to become the nicest man in town, and he oddly succeeds to the point of even irritating Ned Flanders with his goodwill, and there's some really great dialogue throughout, especially when discussing how materialistic Christmas has become, therefore allowing it to basically lose all meaning where presents are now the main focus. I really like the consistent quality of season 16, there isn't really an episode I would consider to be meh in a phrase. Most are good, with the rest being above average. Personal highlights for me include Trios of Horror 15, where Flanders can foresee people's deaths by touching them, and when trying to save Homer, it's revealed he will destroy the entire town, and his final line in this episode never fails to get a laugh out of me. Oh, you stupid son of a- Don't Fear the Roofer had a fun plot where Homer makes a new friend, only for the rest of the family to believe Homer just made him up, and that Ray the Roofer is not a real person. Marge had some really great standout episodes where she mothers Nelson, and a really great one is where she interferes with a baking competition. My personal favourite from this season, however, has got to be future drama. I honestly wish we could get a full season of the show, seeing these characters grown up, where future possibilities are just endless. Or maybe I just really miss future armour, but either way, I can't wait to see more episodes like this. I always try and tune in for them whenever I can, and it seems like every season or so we do get a brand new one, and seeing Bart and Lisa grown up... Homer and Marge divorced in this particular one, and so many really crazy unexpected paths for many of Springfield's beloved characters. It's a phenomenal way to breathe new life into the show, where animation just has endless possibilities anyway, and utilising characters that are already well established and removing certain constraints really does allow for adapting more content for the show. Coming off the previous run, the consistent quality kind of dispersed quickly with season 17. There are some highlights and also some episodes I do tend to skip over when re-watching this show. The finale is one of the worst where Homer and Marge become marriage counsellors. Wasn't really a fan of the episode where Marge hits her head and has amnesia, remembering everybody except Homer, but that's not to say every episode is awful. Highlights for me are definitely the Ricky Gervais episode, Homer Simpson, This Is Your Wife which was written by Gervais, and honestly I was very surprised about how he wrote his character so well, where the Simpsons family enter into a wife swap TV show, and Marge becomes part of a new family, where Charles, played by Ricky, is trying to steal her away from Homer. We've seen that kind of thing before, but I do appreciate Gervais's writing style, and how that character is written with dialogue tendencies that only really work for Ricky anyway. Another welcoming offer was the Trios of Horror special featuring one of my favourite movie parodies covering artificial intelligence. The Italian Bob expands on the Sideshow Bob lore once again where he has a fresh start for himself in Italy, only for The Simpsons to once again trigger his murderous rage. In terms of a favourite, I'm going to go with the episode My Fair Laddie. Where stereotypes are concerned, the character of Groundskeeper Willie is just a fantastic piece of comic relief. And this episode actually manages to utilise him for a proper plotline. Lisa makes her her mission to make him into a proper gentleman, which does work, until obviously the typical reset kicks in. Season 18 is a very interesting DVD release and quite a sudden one, where after season 17 came out it was announced that the Simpsons box sets going forward were cancelled and that no more would be produced, and then a couple of years later that decision was reversed. And Season 18 is a great set. When this came out on DVD, I'll be honest, it was the first time I had seen a lot of these episodes. Some I did recognise, and overall it is a solid season and a welcome addition to the collection. And with the Fat Tony-inspired cover art, the first episode, The Muck, The Chef, The Wife and Her Homer, added a lot of depth to Fat Tony. It felt great to see a full episode use the connotations often associated with sort of mafia-related stories, and bend these ideas slightly. And although Tony is a feared mobster, he still has a heart and shows his responsibilities as a parent. 
One thing that does trip him up is mixing work and his family life together, and I loved seeing his son Michael and how innocent he is perceived to be at first, making the writing just feel more fresh and unpredictable. Likewise, the episode Kill Gill, Volume 1 and 2, gave me the same feelings. Marge learns to be less of a pushover, where Gill loses his job and stays with the Simpsons over the holiday season, and then much longer onwards from that, basically outstaying his welcome. Little Big Girl was a really strange Bart-themed episode, where he falls for an older girl who is also pregnant. Unexpected for sure. Personal favourite for this season, however, is 24 Minutes. Overall, an excellent homage to the 24 TV series where we see Bart and Lisa working together to stop a stink bomb from ruining a school bake sale. Some really excellent quirks to the animation, and overall, a really well-written storyline to complement this unique style of episode delivery. Of course, I couldn't forget about the Simpsons movie, which technically slots into place between season 18 and season 19, and this is easily a highlight of my childhood, where 10-year-old me was just losing his mind over the idea of there being a Simpsons movie. It holds up really well. Animation is stunning, arguably the best it's ever been. Extremely well-written overall, a very cohesive story for Homer in particular, but I do value how the whole family is equally utilised throughout where Homer is responsible for polluting Springfield to the point of the entire town being quarantined and sealed off in a giant dome where the Simpsons family are able to escape. And then we see Russ Cargill, the antagonist of this film, who intends on destroying the town and making a new Grand Canyon tourist attraction in its place, thus apparently resolving any environmental issues, only for the Simpsons family to come back and thankfully save the day. Overall, this is a great journey, especially for Homer, like I mentioned. I feel we get a lot of internal conflict with his character, but we see a lot of satisfying moments from him in particular. I love the voiceover, some incredible performances, especially from Albert Brooks, who once again brings another character into the show, voicing the villain Russ Cargill, and I am sure many will recognize him in other roles in the show, surprisingly, as well. But overall, an incredible piece of my childhood. I love this movie. Definitely something I do revisit more or less every other year. Bridging the gap between season 18 and the somewhat premature release of season 20, which we'll get to that momentarily, we have, of course, season 19, which I love having this box set in the collection. The only downside to it, in my opinion, is the cover art, where every other season has matched the streaming covers, and this one took a complete detour. It should have been Melhouse on this cover if we are to match those streaming icons, but instead we get, as it was described, collectible Homer artwork, which I guess was done for marketing purposes. Other than that, though, I'm grateful to have this in the collection, and although I did recognise a good majority of these episodes, I didn't recognise all of them, so it's great to really appreciate this season to the fullest. Highlights for me include Homer of Seville, which has one of the funniest lines of dialogue, where Homer becomes an opera star thanks to a serious injury giving him impressive singing vocals, and so he hires a personal assistant, only for this woman to be an obsessive stalker. Marge? What is it, sweetie? Everyone's wearing clothes in here. That's nice. Midnight Towboy is also a personal favourite where Homer becomes a tow truck driver, where the power of other people's cars does eventually get the better of him. Funeral for a Friend is a very well-written episode where Sideshow Bob fakes his death to once again try and murder Bart Simpson, where you'd think after almost 20 years of doing this, these kinds of plots, these episodes would become exhausting. Thankfully not. But my personal favourite, and overall the most impressive episode from this season, is Eternal Moonshine of the Simpson Mind. This was a really engaging episode and a great deep dive into Homer's psyche, and made for a very creative and well-told story. And proving that point even more, this episode actually won an Emmy for Outstanding Animated Programme. And so, even though we have season 20 on DVD, this was actually technically the last box set to release. And even though I'm hopeful that more will eventually come out, I do somehow doubt this will happen. It was teased on the inside of the box set from Matt Groening himself, stating that, When is the next DVD box set coming, you ask? I can confidently assure you someday. And finally we have, of course, Season 20, which is a really bizarre release 
for this box set, just a one-off done for the 20th anniversary of the show, and there's no bonus content included, such as commentaries, deleted scenes, etc., literally just the episodes, but I will say, for a box set design, this is easily one of my absolute favourites. At any point I decide to pick this up off the shelf, I just instantly start looking at the cover art for obscure characters. But looking at the episodes themselves, honestly a lot of these are really forgettable, which pains me to say with this being an anniversary release. But that's not to say there aren't some fun inclusions, the opening in particular is my personal favourite from this season, that being Sex Pies and Idiot Scrapes, where Homer and Flanders become partners in a bounty hunting business, and oddly, they work really well together until Flanders has to turn on Homer and bring him in, and there's some incredible animation throughout this sequence, especially with various chases going on. And speaking of the animation, the episode Take My Life Please is notable, for that being the show's transition into the HD format, and so any episode now broadcast from this point onwards is shown in the 16x9 aspect ratio. And overall that paved the way for a new title sequence, various changes and updates to the animation style as a whole. So that's going to do it for this look at my collection of Simpsons DVD box sets. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments what is your favourite season of the show, or do you have a specific episode that you relate to? As always, I love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And of course, for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?